What's going on everyone? It's JB Tech Fanatic and I'm back again with another video. As always, I want to start this video by thanking you for joining me. If you have not yet subscribed, I'd be so honored if you'd consider. And if you like this video, don't forget to hit that thumbs up. And if you want to know when the latest videos are available, don't forget to click the notifications to on. So today we're back in the kitchen with Samsung. If you've been following my series on Samsung smart home appliances, you know that we've already covered the microwave, stove, dishwasher, washer, dryer, and we are now moving on to one of the most important items in our home, the refrigerator. Now, thankfully, I have owned several models over the past few years, and if you want to look back through the videos, you can check them out. Now, they were the four-door flex, and they are actually still available. Now, this is the latest and greatest from Samsung. I kind of put it up here on the screen. This is the 23 cubic foot smart refrigerator. Now, this is the counter depth. This is, you know, if you're going for the flush look, it should be almost even with your counters. So if you want to go more space, you can go larger. Um, and they also come in stainless steel and black stainless. Now, there's a lot to cover on this refrigerator as, to me, there's two portions of this. We have the overall usability of the refrigerator and ice maker itself, and then we have the Smart Hub. Now, the Smart Hub's important because I don't believe any of us would buy a refrigerator with a big tablet on the front of it unless we wanted to use it. By the way, Samsung has many different models that look just like this without the Smart Hub, you know, if that's more your style, no problem. The inside should relatively be the same. Now we're going to cover this all in two parts to this series, but hopefully I answered all of your questions. But of course, if I missed anything, you can always ask me in the comment section. I can't wait to get started. Let's do this. This is our first look. All of the packaging and the accessories have not been taken out. Just so you know, everything is included that you need. I often keep the protective layer on the outside of the refrigerator for as long as possible to prevent damage. So we have two packs in the top. They both have three shelves. I just wanted to show you the UV deodorizing filter area as well as the triple and metal cooling. You can see that we have um, where the air comes through there, there and there. And then of course up top, you can see that we have our lighting. We have two overhead lights followed by the two lights on the left and right side. Here is where your water filter goes. Then you have the flex crisper and then the crisper plus drawer. These are nice. We'll talk about these more in a moment. All right, now we're taking our first look at the bottom. Of course, this is the flex. You can use these as um, a freezer or a refrigerator. Here we have um, more of the accessories. Of course, we have two more three packs of shelves as well as two already to go drawers and then the wine accessory. Let me move up for you. Again, we have the wine accessory rack. Of course, you can use that for soda or whatever you'd like. A pull out drawer. And then the best part I think is the ice machine. Here you can see we have the ice bits and then the cubed ice. We also have two drawers for the ice, which is great. And I like that they kind of positioned it up top there. But first look, let's get this all unpacked. So I just wanted to give you a close up look of everything. Here is the crisper plus drawer. Here is the flex crisper. Now this is special as you can use this for a meat and cheese drawer. As you can see, you have the air vent in the back allowing you to change it to much colder temperatures. Water filter is easy to change. You simply open up the plastic and twist and it will pop right out. Inside, you can see we have our bottom shelf. On the right, this can be cut in half, not literally cut in half, but this will fold back allowing you more space for your bottom shelf. You can adjust these shelves up two more notches if you'd like. The top shelf, the entire shelf can slide out if you would like, and you can place that on these here. So there's not a lot of adjustment going, but it looks like they've given us much more room. Close up look 
of your UV deodorizing filter and your triple and metal cooling. Just everything looks like quality, very well built. Here's a close-up look at the left door. Flipping over to the other side. You got that nice Samsung branding right dead center on the top. Close-up look of the beverage center. Now a close-up look of the freezer. Here's the ice maker, ice trays. There we have our drawer. Here's the right side. Sorry about all the wrapping there on the floor. Okay, so before I go into my setup settings, I'm just gonna briefly go over the Family Hub. Don't worry, I will go into detail on the Family Hub in part two. So the Family Hub is essentially Samsung's hub to control your smart home right in your kitchen. Now the hub itself is now full 1080p. It's bright and vivid. I do have a, prot uh, a protector over it right now, but it definitely gets bright. Um, it is touch as well as the speaker can be used for watching YouTube, streaming Netflix from your Samsung QLED TV, um, or using it for your Bixby voice, Alexa voice, and timers, as well as your ring doorbell. So it's very useful, and I'm sure that you'll like the hub once you start using it. Now, the hub itself has apps. These apps, there's not a lot to choose from other than what's already built in. Now again, a development that they have went to from just having Bixby, they now offer Alexa. That's great, you can have both voice assistants as well as, well as your photo gallery, you can use Grubhub, um, Instacart, you have a full web browser for the internet. Um, so it's just really nice to have. Calendars, lots of options to put pictures and videos on the screen, um, helping you cook, bunch of different ways to give you recipes and even follow along as you cook in the kitchen as well as the view inside function which of course is the cameras of all of your um, items inside your refrigerator and next here we have whatever you can't get in an app you can actually save as a favorite from your web browser but just stock we have YouTube Instagram um, Facebook Twitter so it's definitely useful. We have Amazon Music, you have Pandora, iHeartRadio, and again, I put Google Music on mine. All I had to do was save it as my favorite from my web browser. Here you can have your Samsung SmartThings, which essentially is what this hub will control. I can control my other Smart Hub refrigerator, washer, dryer, stove, dishwasher, vacuum, thermostats, garage door, door locks, cameras, Everything that is compatible with Samsung SmartThings, you can control right here on your hub. Again, this is something I love. One of the best things is, is when someone rings my ring doorbell, I actually detached my standard doorbell and it rings right out of the speaker here, pulls up the video right on my hub, and it's a great feature. Other than that, you can again put photos, themes, they have artwork that you can do, Overall, it's really fun to use. Oh, and one last thing, my kids love the whiteboard feature where you can draw, doodle, put stickers, and you can actually send it to your mobile devices or leave it for you know, your wife, husband, kids, it's their birthday, it's just a really cool feature. Now, we're gonna go over settings of how I actually have my hub set up. And again, we'll go over more detail in part two. Now we're gonna get the smart hub set up. Let's be honest, there's no real reason to buy a refrigerator with a large screen on the front of it unless you plan on taking advantage. Now this can do a lot of things, but it's Samsung's idea that this will be a centrally located smart hub to control your smart home as well as helping you with cooking, recipes, 
able to view what's inside with the cameras and lots of extra things. But first we gotta get it connected. What I recommend doing if you have not downloaded Samsung SmartThings on your mobile device, go ahead and do so now. Once that's complete, you wanna make sure that your phone is connected to your Wi-Fi network as well as your refrigerator. Once that's complete, you're going to see something like this. This is Samsung SmartThings. To connect it and get going, we're going to press the plus sign, we're going to go to device, and then we're gonna click Samsung, and then we're gonna click refrigerator, and then we're gonna click family hub. Once you do that, it's going to tell you, let's get started, hit start. Now, once you pick your location, go ahead and hit next, and it says on your family hub's display, go to settings connection, and then we're gonna turn on what's call, called easy connection. So as you see here, we have connections, we have our Wi-Fi, network status, Bluetooth and speaker, and easy connection. Go ahead and click easy connection, and it gives you a simple one, two, three. Once you hit connect, you're gonna go ahead and go back to your mobile device and follow the instructions. What it's gonna do is it's going to link it to your account and it's also going to set up your smart hub and connect it to the Wi-Fi network of your choosing. Go ahead and do that now. I'm already connected, but you're going to come to the registration, go ahead and hit continue and finish, and let's move on. I did want to make a quick mention, you're going to have to hit OK on the refrigerator as well as your device in order for them to finish fully registering your device. Then it will give you a pin, go ahead and type in that pin on your mobile device. You will know it's complete as you will get a success on your mobile device and you will also get a congratulations on your refrigerator. Now that we know that we're connected and everything is set up with Samsung SmartThings, let's go through the settings and all of the menus. First, let's go back to connections. Again, we have our Wi-Fi network status and easy connection, but here we have our Bluetooth and speaker. Now, if you wanna use your hub speaker as a Bluetooth speaker, simply make sure that speaker mode is turned on and follow the one and two and it's really easy to do and it's a great sounding speaker now we go to display under display we have brightness which this gets very bright motion detector which will turn on the screen when someone is present this is great if you are just playing photos it also has a clean screen mode what this does is it lets you wipe at the top wipe at the bottom and then hit done. That way it doesn't press a bunch of buttons while you're wiping it down, very useful. Here we have our wallpapers. Love this feature, so much to choose from. We have weather, albums, art, color, and shuffle. We have all kinds of different art segments here, whatever you choose. You can see that you have a lot to choose from, but if you want it to just flip through all, you just go ahead and click on slideshow. Once slideshow is on, it selects everything for you. Now, if you wanna use your own photos, you also have album. You can upload photos right from your mobile device very easily. Anything that you do choose, remember to hit apply to save it, and then it will take place right away. Don't forget you have home screen. Home screen's a little different. You just have the option of pictures or colors. And again, whatever you choose, go ahead and press apply. Now, tap view. Tap view is very useful. Double tap on the screen to easily see what's inside. This is great if you wanna see what's inside with the cameras and not open up your refrigerator all the time. Cover screen, whether you want that on or off. You can also start as low as 15 seconds to five minutes and then you can go to two hours from two minutes as long as the duration lasts, or sorry, keeping it on for two hours. If you want those photos just you know going through nonstop, it can do that for up to two hours. So that's really nice. And that's pretty much it in this section. 
Moving on, we're going to sound. Sound, we have media, um, system, and then touch sounds. If you like to have that um, feedback when you're touching the screen, go ahead and click that to on. I don't, but it's up to you. Notifications, you can choose whether you want it to preview or not. I like this on. Samsung account, that's where you would sign in and out. This needs to be done, of course, to use Samsung Smart Things. Now, Bixby Voice, here is where you would set this up. Now, you can choose the style if you want a man's voice or a woman's voice. You also can choose sound feedback so you know when Bixby's listening and when he or she stops. This is the same thing on like a Google Home. And then of course you can set the sensitivity. So if it's going off too much, you can lower this. I just keep it at medium. All right, moving on, security. You do have the option. So if you hit enable, you can set a pin. Once you are ready, go ahead and put in your pin, press set, and then it's done. And then you can set the restrictions for whatever you'd like. Next we have storage. Here you can see how much storage your apps and your images are taking as well as your available storage. So this is nice to keep tabs that you're not too full and erase photos if you need to. You can set different languages, date and time. Of course, date and time will be automatically done when you're connected to Wi-Fi. Accessibility, we have the screen reader option, text to speech. You can set different size font. I like it extra huge, as they call it. You can go to grayscale, negative color. And then of course you can adjust this to whatever is best for you. About Family Hub, this is where you can check for software updates. I recommend to check and make sure that you are on the latest, with which at this point you should be on Tizen 6.0. Last but not least in this section, we have the help and contact us. You have your manual, remote management, you can send feedback, so it's pretty nice. You can actually make sure that everything is running smoothly right on your hub. We are now looking at the refrigerator manager or fridge manager. Here we can adjust the temperatures, so this is why they call it flex. Bottom right, you can choose full on freezer all the way down to standard beverage. You have meat and fish, fruit and veggies, and then freeze. Whatever you'd like, just click save, and then you can go to the left bottom and select your freezer settings. On the top, we have power cool as well as power freeze, but you can also adjust your temperature, turn on power cool, and then you have the flex crisper, which you can choose meat and fish or fridge. Whatever you'd like, go ahead and hit save. Here you can see auto fill, which is your pitcher with water, making ice, which we have both ice makers activated, and then when you need a filter. So we have special features at the bottom as well as fridge settings. When we click fridge settings, you can turn on or off your cubed ice, ice bits, auto water fill, door alarm, set your temperature to Celsius or Fahrenheit, you can turn on your UV deodorizing filter. I leave that on. This tells you when your water filter needs to be replaced. And then you have where you can shut off cooling completely, your demand response. But what I was talking about earlier that I wanted you to see was the self-check. I said that you can check to make sure your refrigerator is running right. All you would need to do is click self check and then hit start and this will troubleshoot and make sure everything is functioning correctly. No errors detected, we're good. Double check again, still good. Okay, so we also have special features option down here, which just basically explains I'll flip through this so you can check it out. Metal cooling, the stainless steel paneling helps maintain consistent temperatures. Triple cooling provides per precise temperature and humidity control in all three zones, ensuring maximum freshness. This is crucial 
for keeping your food from spoiling. And I tell you, this refrigerator does a great job. All right, moving on. Anytime you need help or you're not understanding what this layout is, go ahead and click help. And as you can see, it explains everything for you. So now I'm going to go through all the specifications. I like to do this so in case you need to know something specific, you will know whether or not this will be the right fit for your home. All right, so the refrigerator design, this is counter depth. So you know I do have it pulled forward a little bit for the video, but it does sit pretty much flush with the counters and countertops. This is the black stainless. Again, I still have the protected plastic on it, so it's gonna look slightly different. This is also available in stainless steel. Now, it has a total of four doors and the depth is 28 and a half. So the refrigerator features, auto fill water pitcher, humidity controlled crispers, gallon bins, gallon door bins. So you can put full size gallons into the door. Um, it features two drawers, LED lighting. It does have an internal digital display. It has an internal filtered water dispenser and has four total shelves. Again, this is for the refrigerator. It has slide in shelf, spill proof shelves, and fingerprint resistant finish. The water and ice dispenser, it has a wine rack, an automatic ice maker, and showcase door. I wanted to make a quick note. There is no way to use the dispenser for ice. It only dispenses water. The ice is in the bottom only. You must get it out with a scooper or your cup. That's something that a lot of people have asked. There is no way you know, to get the automatic ice out of the water dispenser. All right, so flex zone drawer temperature zones. Of course, we have down to negative eight to negative 23 for freeze. And then for soft freeze, it's 20 or negative five to 23. And then for meat and fish, it's negative one to 30. And then for fruit and veggie, veggies, it's two and 39. And then the chill mode is from four to 39. Flex zone temperature zones. This features a total of five temperature zones. Again, that's what keeps your food fresh for longer and it does a great job. Now, again, we have two different types of ice, but the ice makers are in the bottom and you saw that we had interior lights down there also. The family hub window size is 27.5, it's made of glass. The actual display is 21.5, featuring a full HD 1080 by 1920p that is upgraded to the standard definition um, tablet or screen from before, so that's nice. Now this features a capacitive touch display. It has a 1.7 gigahertz quad core processor, 2.5 gigs of RAM up from 512 and one gig respectively. So again, it boosted it to 2.5 and it has a total of eight gigs of flash memory up from one and two gigs. So everything has gotten better. Features Bluetooth Wi-Fi connectivity combo and has Tizen 6.0, that is the hub version or software version. This has one speaker that's 25 watts and it sounds great and it's right here at the bottom and it just shoots right out and it sounds great. It does have a USB port that's open in the top of the door here. Um, this is, of course, Energy Star certified and an energy consumption of 631 kWh a year. Total capacity, 22.5 cubic foot. Refrigerator capacity is 13.7, so again, above here. And that's if you don't decide to use this bottom, of course. Freezer capacity is 8.8 .8 cubic foot. And then as far as product dimensions with hinges and handles, I'm not gonna read them all for you, just I'm gonna list them right here. The product weight is 337.3 pounds. Shipping weight is 359.3 pounds. Now, warranty, you get the standard one year, if you would, bumper to bumper warranty. Five years on parts and labor of sealed refrigeration, and then 10 years parts and labor on sealed refrigeration systems only. 
10 years parts and five years labor on a digital inverter compressor the evaporator condenser dryer and connecting to so now it's time for my honest review now i'm taking this based off of my actual usage and feedback from my wife and kids as we know that we all use our refrigerator differently first let's talk about food freshness how does this refrigerator do at keeping your vegetables fresh for longer? And I've owned many different refrigerators through the years, and I tell you, I have ones that, you know, you put some cilantro in your drawer and it's rotted three days later, and then I have some that I've had that gets you a couple weeks. I can honestly say, when it comes to fresh vegetables and fruit that you put in the refrigerator, when they're fresh, I'm getting about a solid 30 days of freshness. So for me, that's crucial, right? I mean, if we could save money on not throwing away as much fruit, vegetables, that's a win. The second thing is the flexibility, meaning I can have a freezer, I can have soft freeze, I can just have a beverage center, and then at the top we have a full-fledged refrigerator. Samsung has done an excellent job at giving us options here. It is something that now that I have, and again, I have two different models of this refrigerator in my home right now. I can honestly say I couldn't go to a standard refrigerator that doesn't give me those options as I have grown so accustomed to them. There is nothing better than having a essentially a, its own drink refrigerator stocked with beverages ice cold you know if you want to put wine in here juice boxes soda beer whatever and they're going to be icy cold you could pick it so that they're slushy even or you want to have meat and cheese you got it you have the ability to essentially have three products in one a refrigerator a wine cooler or and or beverage cooler, and then of course a freezer. Again, something I couldn't live without. Now, ice makers and water dispensers are so important to us as the consumer. I know it is to my family. They love their ice and they want cold water. Now, as we all know, ice needs to freeze. The more your kids leave the um, freezer door open or the refrigerator door, depending on where they're at, the longer it's going to take to make ice. This right here is a godsend. So when you're talking about the ability to have an ice cold pitcher at any time that you can you know, pour out and it refills itself, I put drinks that I want my kids to get to, the juices, and then fast snacks. We got some cheese snacks, yogurts, and some pastries. They don't have to leave the main refrigerator or better yet, freezer open. And this is why the freezer portion with the double ice maker is crucial to my family. Now, as dumb as that might sound to you, we were always out of ice. Not only do we have tons of ice, we have two different types of ice and big storage bins so it can keep filling up. This is something that I honestly believe Samsung took the complaint of the customer and they went back and they rethought the process of making ice, getting you cold water, and so on and so forth. The other thing that you might run into on refrigerators is when you get cold water out of the spout, all of a sudden one day it won't work anymore and you wonder why. Most manufacturers wrap, you know, gosh, I've seen maybe 20 feet of tubing behind the drawers in the refrigerator. This is how you get cold water, right? The water has to be cold. So it has to be in the refrigerator. Refrigerator. They give us the jug, always cold. That's gonna be the temp of the refrigerator. You never have the spout breaking. You also have the ability to take that spout off and clean it if it gets you know a little bit of uh, hard water or whatever it might be. So again, these features so far have worked flawlessly and they're extremely useful. So, overall design of the refrigerator. Now, I am really weird about things, but I still have the plastic on here. 
So it's gonna be much more shiny. You're probably seeing what looks like spots of the plastic. I just leave it on as long as possible to keep my kids from dinging it or scratching it. But I love the flush design. Now again, I'll show you another photo of my other refrigerator. I loved it the way it looked, but it was always dirty. It has the chrome going down the middle. Samsung again thought about the customer here and the handles are hidden down here and they're not chrome so you don't get fingerprints that's ugly. You also because the dispenser is hidden you don't get the water drips down, the hard water spots. Almost every refrigerator that I have owned the water and ice center was hard water spots all over it no matter how often we cleaned it and yes I have a water softener. So it just feels as if Samsung really stepped back and said, look, this is what the customers want and we're going to give it to them. Now, the price of this refrigerator is up there, but I also love the fact that with the hub, unlike most phones, Samsung, with the exception of version one, has at this point updated all the hubs I've owned from version um, three on to Tizen 6.0. So essentially giving us all the new features. With those features, again, the cameras. The cameras are something that you might or might not use. I use them. It takes some time. You want to put in, like I've showed you with the Smart Hub, putting in the different um, expirations and it gets better and better over time. But we've been at the grocery store, we forget, yeah, do we have cheese? Boom, pull up the camera, look at it. So again, an extremely useful feature, but it might not be something that you need. For those of you that don't need the Smart Hub, buy the four-door flex. You get all of the benefits of the refrigerator without the smart features. Now, the speaker. The speaker is a great addition in the kitchen, not just for Bluetooth music, not just to stream YouTube or something on your refrigerator, but for cooking, having a cookbook being read to you um, in cook mode, having it tell you step by step what to do. It's just something that's so nice to have right here. The timer, the ability to turn on the oven from the refrigerator, even though the, the oven is right next to you, it's just nice to have this big display right here to set it up on. All in all, this is a refrigerator I highly recommend. There is one thing I will say, and this is with all appliances and technology, buy an extended warranty. If you buy a five-year extended warranty, the chances that you will use it and it will more than pay for itself are literally like 99%. And when you have more technology, there's always a drawback to that, right? more problems. The old washers and dryers lasted for 15 years. The new ones don't seem to last more than two. It's almost the more tech in something, the more problems. But if you buy the extended warranty, you can thoroughly enjoy this and have your cake and eat it too. So this refrigerator, I highly recommend. I love it. It's beautiful. It has all the features that I need. It keeps my food fresh. It keeps everything nice and frozen, and it is just a great product. That pretty much concludes part one on Samsung's brand new Smart 4-Door Flex. Now, don't forget to check out part two as we will continue to dig deeper into the Smart Hub and hopefully cover everything that you want to know. As always, I'd like to slow things down for a moment and remind you life is so short. Don't forget to love your family love your neighbor. The world is a mess right now and the only people that can change it is you and I. And it's amazing to me how if we just go out and do a small act of kindness, how much of a change we can actually make. I want to remind you, I do YouTube for you and you only. So if you need me, reach me in the comment section. You can also come follow me on social media sites, Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, Twitter, at JB Tech Fanatic. I'll be glad to answer any questions I can for you over there. But of course, the best way to reach me is in the comments section. I just want to say thank you, invite you to subscribe one last time. I can't wait to see you in the next video and talk to you in the comments. And until then, I'm JB Tech Fanatic and I'm out. Peace.